Hi, I'm Patrick Fuller, here with our amazing instructor, Jacob Yap. This is Effective Martial Arts, and in this lesson, a complete basic tutorial for the guillotine choke. Alright, so the guillotine is the second most common and a high percentage submission after the rear naked choke. So very important move to learn and to learn how to defend against. We're going to see guillotine defense in another tutorial, so look out for that one. Now the guillotine is a very powerful submission. It's a great counter off of a double leg takedown when the person is trying to shoot in on you. And it's also, as many submissions, a great controlling position that you can use to transition to other submissions such as the Darsh choke and Anaconda choke that we're going to see in future videos. So you can finish the guillotine choke standing in the open, you can finish it standing against the wall, you can finish it from any type of guard situation, close guard, half guard, modified guard, as well as from the top, full mount position. So before we go into the specifics of the different positions, different setup, different uh, finishing variations, let's look at the basic principles that make this choke work. So for the guillotine to work, you need to have a couple things. First off, his spine, his neck, needs to be perpendicular to my spine and his head in this region over here, which we call the hornet's nest, where I have had access to his neck and I can wrap it up. So he's going to be like this. Either I get myself to this position or I get him in this position and we meet halfway and I'm going to be able to wrap up the neck over here. Now for the choke to work, I need downwards pressure on the head, I need upwards pressure on the neck and I need downwards pressure on the body. In this case, standing, the downwards pressure on the body is provided by gravity. So, in this case, standing, I'm gonna have my hand wrapped around here in the neck. Downwards pressure is gonna be provided with my shoulder. Upwards pressure is gonna be provided with this part, the blade of the forearm, the bone, in the trachea. And downwards pressure is gonna be provided by his own body weight with gravity. Now, to illustrate, uh, this is not a correct execution of the choke, but just so you can see, if I have my forearm in his neck here and I'm just pushing with my hand and driving my forearm up, I could possibly get a choke, okay? This is not the right technique, but you see the mechanics of it. It's kind of like a guillotine, it's inverted guillotine. So this is going down and the blade is going up, chopping off the head or chopping off at least, the compressing the trachea and uh, stopping the blood flow in the carotid arteries on both sides of the neck. So that's the basic mechanics of the choke. So now that you understand the finishing mechanics, there's also a sequence of steps that we have to go through in order to get to that finishing position. You can't just go ahead and squeeze right off the bat. So first step is you have to collect the head and you have to control the head. So you have to get him in that position. That can happen many different ways. We're gonna see examples a little bit later. And then you have to control the head. So typically that's gonna start with what we call a chin strap. So you're gonna cup his chin with your four fingers over here, right over here on the chin. You're gonna squeeze his head with your elbow against your ribs over here. So if he tries to pull out his head, try to pull out your head, you're gonna be controlling him and constantly applying downwards pressure to keep his posture broken. That's true when we're standing, it's also true on the ground as well. So that's phase number one, collecting the head and controlling the head, controlling the posture. Phase number two is gonna to be to connect my hands together. So let's say I do it on this side, here. So I have the chin strap over here, I'm blocking with my ribs, and I'm crushing down with my shoulder, so his posture is broken, I'm controlling the head. Phase number two is gonna to be to connect my hands together here. So once I have a good connection, then I'm gonna be ready to squeeze. This is just gonna be phase number three. Now that's uh, not gonna be easy if the guy knows what he's doing. So we're gonna see that more in detail in the guillotine defense video. But at this point, when I have the chin strap, he's gonna be looking for my hands. He's gonna to try to grab my hands, gonna to try to control my wrist, gonna to try to pull my other hand out. There's gonna be some grip fighting going on here. So I have to stay relaxed at this point and not squeeze yet and fight the grip here until I get a satisfactory grip with none of his fingers inside my grip. If he has his fingers inside, I might waste a lot of energy and not get the finish, so I wanna just get rid of his fingers and get a good finishing position before I go to phase number three, which will be the squeeze. And the squeeze is like we said earlier, downwards pressure on the head, upwards pressure on the neck. I'm gonna do it standing by bringing my hips forward and here getting the tap like so. Okay, from the other side, same thing. Connection here, controlling the head, connecting the hands together here. He's gonna be grip fighting, so I'm gonna be Grip fighting until I can get a satisfactory connection with none of his fingers inside. Once I got that, then it's time to squeeze and get the tap. So very important to respect the sequence. A lot of beginners, when they start, you try to go for the squeeze right away. And that's true, by the way, for every submission. You always go through the steps, proper entry, proper grip. And when you have a satisfactory position, only then do you squeeze. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of energy. You're going to gas out your arms or your legs, depending on what technique you're doing. And the person might escape and then gain the advantage. 
Now we're going to look at the, the different uh, positions on the ground, guard, full mount, and so on, but uh, we're going to show you the different finishing variations standing just to make it simple. So your classic guillotine is going to be here. I'm wrapping up the head. I'm connecting my hand here to the outside of my palm, like so. And then I'm going to be applying downwards pressure with the shoulder and pulling my forearm up into the neck as I drive my hips forward. So that's going to be done differently if we're on the ground, but it's the same mechanic. I'm always driving my hips forward and driving my forearm up into the neck as I compress the trachea. So that's your classic guillotine. So I'm here like this and I have my connection, downwards pressure on the head, breaking the posture, driving the hips forward, pulling the arm up as I get the choke. So it's compressing the trachea, compressing the arteries. Typically, uh, if he does not tap, he will pass out from this because it is a blood choke. So that's a cue as well when you're practicing with your partner. Uh, be a good partner for every blood choke. Don't tap unless it's real. So wait until you feel a little bit lightheaded, like you're gonna pass out before you actually tap, just to help your partner know where's the actual finish. So that's true for rear naked choke, uh, guillotine, triangles, all the blood chokes. Uh, but if it's a joint lock though, you wanna tap early for joint locks because you don't wanna damage your joint. So be safer with the joint locks, but wait a little bit more for the blood chokes. Uh, one caveat though, if it's a neck crank, then you wanna tap early as well because you don't wanna mess up your neck. Now there's a little variation on the uh, classic guillotine, which would be to go a little bit deeper with the arm over here, and that's gonna produce a little bit of a neck crank, turning his head sideways, and it's gonna be kind of my biceps and my forearm, they're gonna be choking both sides of his neck. So it's gonna go like this. Instead of just pulling my forearm straight up like a crowbar, I can go a little bit deeper here, and it's gonna be twisting his face in, and I can do the finish like so. So let's go from the other side, so you can see here, I'm here, so I got the forearm in his neck. If I go a little bit deeper, like so, it kind of turns his face in, and it makes his neck a little bit crooked. You gotta be careful, it doesn't go slow on the finish, but here you'll get a nice tap like this. A nice variation that is very powerful is to go for the high elbow variation. So it's the same way, I have my hand over here, but now instead of just pulling straight up, I'm gonna punch my elbow through here on the top of his shoulder. And there's gonna be advantages to this, we're gonna see this in a moment on the ground, which is gonna prevent one of the common counters, which is to pass the guard. So here, I have this as a downward pressure at the same time on top of my shoulder on his head, and then I can just bring it up and finish. Again from the other side here. So I have this classic guillotine, I just go straight up, pull it up, but now I'm gonna punch my elbow on top. So my forearm is gonna block his shoulder. So downwards pressure here, downwards pressure here, upwards pressure into the neck. A good indication that you're doing it correctly is your partner might uh, cough a little bit when you're executing this choke. So don't worry, it's very normal. <laughs> uh, next variation is the arm in guillotine. So, here, instead of connecting my arms over here, I just might connect my arms over here. Same mechanics exactly. Downwards pressure on the head, upwards pressure on the neck, and finish like so. This might be a little bit more challenging for those who have shorter arms, depending on the size of your partner, but it's a very uh, valid uh, finish as well. So you can do this uh, one standing, you can do it on the ground as well. We're gonna see the different options in a moment. So arm in guillotine, his arm, I'm in his armpit over here, and finishing, same mechanics, downwards and upwards on the neck. Another variation that is uh, most common uh, standing or sometimes when we're on the knees is the uh, 10 finger guillotine. So that's gonna be when his head is in the middle over here and now I'm gonna connect my hands like this and instead of my forearm choking in the trachea, it's gonna be this part of the hand here going straight up in the neck. So I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be connecting my hands together, pulling it up. So I'm here, here, still cupping the chin. I wanna be tight on his body here and make sure my hands are underneath the chin so I might need to adjust if necessary. Now the downwards pressure is gonna be provided by my stern him, crushing his head, I'm going to be pulling my arms up, compressing the neck like so to get the tap. And the last most common variation is the inverted rear naked choke, also known as the power guillotine or figure four guillotine. So it's very similar, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper with my arm. So instead of just stopping here, I'm going to go a little bit deeper here, bring the fingers up here and then slide it until my hand can cut my biceps like this. I want to stay nice and square on top of him, fold that arm as much as possible to break his posture. And here I'm still pushing down on the head, squeezing with my arm. So I'm flexing, pulling my shoulders back, same as the rear naked choke to compress the blood flow and get the tap. Now let's look at the most common entries uh, from each position. Again, this can happen a million different ways, but I'm just giving you examples uh, for you guys to have somewhere to start with. But after that, you can be creative on your entries and setups for the guillotine choke. So the most common one standing is when he goes in for a takedown. So when he goes in, he shoots in and pause at the shoulder bump, boom, here. 
Now, his correct technical execution of the uh, takedown is gonna be to have a high posture with the head. So he's want a head looking up really, really high, and that's gonna make it hard for me to wrap up the head. I have to kind of contort my shoulder. But very commonly, the people make the mistake of looking down as they're shooting in, they're looking at the ground, and that makes it very easy to go for at least the chin strap. So what I'm gonna do here, as he bumps me with his shoulder, I'm gonna have to do a partial sprawl, so I maintain the top position. I wanna lock the chin in, lock the elbow in, so I'm controlling the head, I wanna stay on top of the shoulder, keep on breaking his posture. And from here, I can go to the finish standing like this. As I wrap it up, I go to my finishing mechanics here. And I can also apply any other finishing variation that I want from this position. So again, we're gonna look in more detail at guillotine defense in our guillotine defense video, so look out for that one. But essentially, uh, he has uh, still many counters from the standing position, and one of them is to uh, push my hips away. So I have to have my hips forward in order to finish, and if he pushes my hips away, it makes it harder for me to finish. So what I might wanna do is to bring him against the wall. That's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to finish. So from this position, I wanna kinda of get rid of his grip here, and I wanna jam him against the wall like this. This will allow me to drive my hips forward with more force, and allow him uh, to defend a lot harder, because now the downwards pressure is provided by the wall. Here, still crushing the head with my shoulder, upwards pressure with the arm, and getting the tap, and the cough. Now it's not necessarily done for him, we're gonna see a very powerful counter from this position, from the defensive side, in our guillotine defense video. The other common entry that you can do from the standing position is if you manage to break his posture from the clinch. So you might wanna break his posture, bring his head down. From here you can switch your grip and wrap the head up and from there you can go for any different finishing variation. Now the best option to finish from the standing variation is to do the roll back to mount technique. So it goes like this. Uh, if I, it's, it's hard against an experienced guy. He has many more options to defend when we're standing. So I might want to use the uh, guillotine and the head control grip, the front headlock, as a takedown in order to roll back to the full mount position. So it goes like this. He shoots in. Uh, I'm gonna go this side. Shoots in. Boom. I gotta do a partial sprawl to stabilize the position. I try to get my head grip right away. From here, he's not able to continue driving forward and take me down because I have a good base. I'm gonna ideally connect my hands before I go for the rollback in this technique. And very important, the most important thing in this case is to keep on breaking the posture. If you do, the rollback is gonna be effortless. Then what I wanna do, I wanna bring my leg inside. So I can bring my butterfly hook inside his thigh over here. I can bring my shin across his belly. It could be the other one as well. It doesn't really matter. I can even kind of trip in with this leg. As long as I'm breaking the posture, I want to bring his head down and I want to roll on my opposite shoulder. So if the head is on this side, I want to roll on this shoulder in order for me not to hurt my neck. So here, I go like this. I stabilize, I shoot in, I drop, and I roll to my opposite shoulder in order to get up in the mount position. Now, from this position, we're gonna see a couple finishes from this position, but now I still have the headlock and I can go for my finish many different ways. So a good drill to practice in order for you to be able to achieve this technique is to be able to do the back roll while keeping your hands connected together. That's really important. So you're gonna do it from both sides. We're gonna start with the left leg in front. So imagine you have the head strapped over here, the chin strap, you go for the connection. Now you're ready to shoot in. So you're gonna go forward with your back leg here. You're gonna drop to your bum and then you're gonna roll on your opposite shoulder. So here, roll on your opposite shoulder and here, going to the mouth. And from there, you got your finishing mechanics that we're gonna see in a moment. Once again, a little bit faster from the standing position, roll back to mount, he shoots in, boom, I stabilize, shoot in, roll around, and go to my finishing mechanics here. Now the preferred option is always to do the roll back to mount variation, but sometimes that doesn't work. So you might, uh, once you have the front head lock, however that might happen, you might decide to pull guard. Or sometimes you go for the finish, you go for the roll back, but he's too heavy and kind of sits back, and then you wind up in some type of guard situation. So from here you can still uh, finish, but I wouldn't go there uh, intentionally because uh, you wanna make sure that you have a good grip and you're in a good finishing position because if he escapes from here and he pops his head out, now he can strike you because he's on top position. Now you have to get your way out of there. Another option is from top turtle position. So in this case, for example, you can get there many ways, but for example, he shoots in for a takedown and he shoots in powerfully. So I do a powerful sprawl, but then he winds up in turtle position, I'm on top. We can have wind here different ways, but essentially once I'm here and I have a good grip on the head, so shoulder pressure here, I have the chin strap, I manage it connecting my hands together and I'm confident in my grip. In this instance, I have the arm in guillotine. It could be the arm out as well. What I'm gonna do, if I'm really confident in my grip and he doesn't have any arms in, 
in and I know I can finish, I'm gonna shoot what we call modified guard. So here, I'm gonna get my knee across his hip like this and blocking his hip with one of my feet. So if he stands up and you can see, my shin is across his waist level over here. So I'm blocking here and my hook, my foot is hooking his hip, preventing him from going in this direction, which would be his counter to pass my guard. So once I have the head over here, I have a, underneath the chin a good grip, I'm also gonna lock it on top with my other leg, nice and high, because his counter is to get on this side here. So I wanna stop that from happening, and then finishing mechanics, down on the head, up in the neck, get the choke. Again, this is also possible for the arm out variation. Same thing, same position here, here, and here, and here, and finish like this. Once again, a little bit faster, so he shoots in, I sprawl, I get the turtle here, I get into my position, I shoot, once I have my grip, and only once I have my grip, I shoot my modified guard position, lock it up over here, and now I'm in a good position, either high elbow or classic, to finish. You can also, of course, get the uh, finish, the guillotine choke from a uh, bottom guard position. So in this case, uh, it can happen a million different ways, but the general rule is the same. If I can see the top of his head, I'm in a good position to get my front headlock and then progress to my guillotine chokes. If I'm here, I can get myself to him like this, wrap up, chin strap, connection, and then go to my finish. From here, I could be in different uh, situation. I can also be a uh, modified guard. I can be in some type of half guard situation like this, still with my other leg on top. Very important to have my head, my, my leg, high on the body over here, because if it's kind of loose or down here, it's gonna be easier for him to roll forward or to escape this position. So I wanna be nice and high, and I wanna be on my side. I wanna escape my hips here, so that I can really apply pressure on the neck, bending his head forward, and upwards pressure in the trachea to get the choke. That's also possible if you're in a closed guard situation, if you manage to break the posture and get the head to the side, again, his neck is perpendicular to your spine, you can wrap up the head, escape the hips here, downwards pressure on the knee, escaping the hips nice and far, and then biting on top. You can have the uh, legs crossed like this, you wanna climb up nice and high and remain on your side, and you can do the high elbow or a classic variation here to get the finish. In all cases, in order to finish the guillotine choke, it's very important to escape your hips. So you really want to get your hips to the side so that you have a good bite on the neck and you have a good uh, position to finish. Here, you can apply good pressure on the neck. You can apply good uh, posture break. If you don't have this and you're flat on your back and you try to finish it flat on your back, it's going to be much easier for him to pop his head out eventually, okay? So you have uh, much le less control on the head if you're flat. So escaping the hips and you wanna be on your side so the back is not touching the mat. Now as we saw, the uh, leg on top over here is gonna prevent him from passing the guard. So one of his counters is to hop past the guard. So hop past my guard. Here he's gonna block the leg and get to side control position over here. Here I'm vulnerable, so I wanna let go of the head and start framing uh, if that happens, okay? Very important. We're gonna see this in the uh, guillotine defense video. The other thing you can possibly do is to uh, roll forward here to escape the position. So if he manages to clear my leg over here, he can roll. And now I still have control of the head. I might be able to roll back to mount position over here, but the best is to follow him as he tries to roll. So this leg will provide an attachment for me. As he tries to roll, I'm just gonna follow him right away. So he goes to roll and I follow him here. I land in the full mount position. And here, your two main uh, finishing uh, mechanics for the mounted position is the single arm variation. Here, so I'm gonna go as deep as I can with that arm, so nice and tight. And I'm gonna lock it in with my chest, my solar plexus pressure on my palm. So it looks, my hand is here and I'm digging my chest in my palm against his chest. So that locks my arm in place. So I'm here, nice and deep, here, palm pressure, hand here. And I'm doing kind of a sprawl, digging my forearm in his neck, breaking his posture to get the finish. Now, if he knows what he's doing, he's gonna be grip fighting here. He's gonna be digging for my fingers over here. And try as I may, if he has control of my hand, it's gonna be very hard for me to finish. So what I wanna do in this case, is I wanna post on my head and start connecting my hands together in order to get the finish. What I can do here to finish, I can post on either shoulder. So shoulder over here, locking the hips in place, and I'm gonna be on my tippy toes, not on my knees, and I'm gonna bridge here, digging into the chin. That's also possible on the other side. Here, digging forward, and finishing the choke like so. And there you have it guys, we've got the basics of the guillotine choke. So uh, we saw the most important uh, principle to make this choke work, 
downwards pressure on the head, upwards pressure on the neck, compressing the trachea and the carotid arteries, and downwards pressure on the body, which, if you're standing, is provided by gravity. Against the wall, the wall is gonna assist you in providing, uh, locking the body in place. If you're on your back, the downwards pressure on the body is provided by your legs, leg or legs. And if you're in full mount, the pressure on the body is provided by your hips, pressure against the floor, pinning his body in place. We saw your different steps to the guillotine choke. So step number one is to get control of the head. So getting the chin strap, locking it in with your elbow against your ribs, holding his head in place and keeping the posture broken. Very important for you to be able to finish the choke. Step number two is to connect your hands and there might be a fair amount of grip fighting involved at this step. If he's uh, good at grip fighting, you might need to get your arms back in here and very important not to squeeze until you have a proper position with none of his fingers inside your grip so you want to stay loose and stay relaxed and stay quick until you get a good gripping position and then and only then progress to step number three which would be to apply the squeeze like we said downwards pressure on the head upwards pressure into the neck and uh, pinning the body in place by whatever mechanism uh, is possible depending on the position that you find yourself in we also saw the main variations on the guillotine choke, so uh, these are the main ones, there are others, but your main uh, classic guillotine choke, so grabbing the outside here and digging the forearm up into the neck as you apply downwards pressure. You got the one that's a little bit deeper here, applying pressure with the biceps and forearm. This can produce somewhat of a neck crank, so be careful when you practice this one. Again, you're gonna be squeezing up, pressure down on the head. You got the high elbow variation here, blocking the shoulder in place and digging your arm in here, again, as you keep on breaking the posture. You have your uh, arm in variation, guillotine where instead of gripping in front here uh, and holding on only to the neck you have your arm here inside the armpit and you can do the same finishing mechanics from there if the head is in the middle you also have the ten finger guillotine which isn't as high percentage but can work so where you have controlling the head which you're pinching your elbows together and then you're gonna be choking with this part of the hand they get it inside the neck as you apply pressure with your body to break the posture and apply pressure into the choke the other option as well is the power guillotine, also known as the figure four guillotine or the inverted rear naked choke, where you could go deeper into the choke like this, exposing your hand on the other side and grab your own biceps to get the rear naked choke grip. Fold this arm, fold your head above, and then same mechanics as the rear naked choke, flex, pull the shoulders back, break the posture and squeeze to get the choke. And lastly, we saw many different uh, variations for setups and finishes. So from the standing position, the most common entry is gonna be when the person shoots in for a takedown, either double leg or single leg. You can also get the head control from the clinch position. Uh, and then you can finish standing, you can finish against the wall. The best option starting in a standing position is to do the roll back to mount finish, where in this case, uh, even if you lose the choke, you still remain on top. So then you still have the full mount, which is a good position to be in. Uh, and also you can shoot the guard if you're really confident in your grip you can shoot modified guard and then finish from your back but very important to be on your side from there and for all the guard variations so you got close guard half guard modified guard very important to escape your hips and be on your side and not be flat on your back in order for you to get the finish and lastly, the most powerful way to finish the guillotine choke is from the mounted position, for which we have two main variations. One is single arm, where it's not as a high percentage. If he knows what he's doing, he's gonna be grip fighting, in which case you need to connect your hands together, make sure there's no fingers inside, and then you go to your choking mechanics. So connecting your hands, shoulder pressure, staying on your tippy toes, driving your hips in, breaking the posture, and digging your choke into the neck. So that's it guys, I uh, hope you've enjoyed. Uh, if you have, uh, I suggest you click the like button right now. The video will appear in your like videos. You can come back to it easily. And I suggest that you do review this material often so you can practice with all the tips in mind. I suggest you take notes as well so that you can keep those notes with you when you practice. And a very important practice tip uh, when you're practicing with a partner, don't tap if the submission is not real in the case of a blood choke. So uh, make sure that your partner can execute it well and you're actually feeling a little bit lightheaded and about to pass out uh, before you tap. That way the guy will know that his submission is actually working. There's a caveat to that. If you feel somewhat of a neck crank, tap early, okay? Don't mess with your joints. That's the same thing with any other joint lock submission. You wanna tap early in the case of joint locks because then there's wear and tear that's involved and that might uh, create, create some damage long term. So, but for blood chokes, rear naked choke, triangle choke, guillotine choke, if you don't feel a neck crank, wait until it's real before you tap. That'll practice uh, for you to stay relaxed and also for your partner to know when their submission is actually working. 
So if you have any uh, questions, uh, comments, suggestions, please leave in the comments uh, below. Any ideas on variations or uh, tips and tricks that we didn't cover in this video, leave them below. That might help other people uh, practice better as well. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel right now. We've got tons of quality martial arts video tutorials coming up in every range of fighting, striking, grappling, and wrestling. So till next time, I'm Patrick Fuller. And I'm Jacob Yap. This is Vective Martial Arts. Remember, practice well, safety first, and use these techniques only for self-defense.